What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy Dylan, and I'm here to do my preview video for the New York Jets versus Miami Dolphins. It is in the Meadowlands. It is a, an away game for us, home game for them. Um, yeah, and so let's go ahead and just jump right into this. We're going to start off, obviously, with the injury report. Unfortunately for the Dolphins, even after all of the guys that we've had to put on injured reserved, uh, and, and thus have come off of the injury report, uh, the injury report has gotten a bit longer. Although most of these guys are going to be good to go, um, or they should actually really all be good to go. The only guys that have questionable are Wilkins and Andrew Van Ginkle, uh, Van Ginkle with a back and Andrew, or Christian Wilkins, I was going to say Andrew Wilkins, uh, with a quad, um, so that those will be things to keep an eye on, but they are questionable and should at least be good to go for the game. As far as everybody else, it's Elijah Campbell with a toe, Brandon Jones with an ankle, Tua with his left finger, his middle finger, Jerome Baker with his knee, Brissett with a knee, Robert Jones with a wrist, and Shaheen with a shoulder. Uh, but not really much there. We should be relatively, you know, good to go and all hands on deck, basically. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect any of these guys will be held out because of their injuries. They just have to play through it and, you know, still be productive. So um, anyway, and then as far as the Jets go, they do have, they have had a ton of injuries this season. And a lot of their guys obviously have been put on injured reserve as a result. Um, but their current injury report is not particularly long. They didn't, it's not updated. Let me see if, uh, I'll give it a quick refresh, but the Jets don't appear to have, there's no update. At, well, at least, I, I'm getting this from the Dolphins website. So, you know, they don't have an update and no game status designation, but, um, they have Nathan Shepard, Elijah Vera Tucker, obviously their rookie offensive lineman who's been doing really well, and then um, Zach Wilson as well, although we know that Joe Flacco is going to be playing in this game, so Zach Wilson will not. Um, yeah, and so that's really about it for the injury report. Now let's go ahead and get into my game preview template. So the Dolphins obviously are three and seven, Jets are two and seven. We just have a single game ahead of them as of right now. Obviously, if the Jets were to somehow win this game, then we would be tied at three and seven. Um, a P or no, no, I'm sorry. We would each have three wins. We would then be three and eight, and they would be three and seven. Um, obviously, they have had their bye. We have not. That is why there is a game discrepancy there. But there really is no reason why the Dolphins should lose this game. And when as we get through it, you'll see that in pretty much, you know, most categories, we actually do, or, or a lot of categories, we actually do beat them. And, um, you know, their defense, while it started off pretty well in the first few games of the season, uh, it certainly has fallen off. Um, I'm not particularly worried about Joe Flacco. Michael Carter is probably one of their, I mean, they have some decent weapons uh, with Michael Carter and then some of their wide receivers. Corey Davis, Denzel Mims, um, uh, uh, God damn it, what's his name? Elijah Moore, uh, you know, their rookie receiver or whatever. So they do have some options and, and some guys available or whatever, but obviously the offense has been struggling. Their quarterbacks, you know, they're, well, their rookie quarterback has had his struggles. They've obviously had a few guys in and out of the lineup to this point. You know, they had to use Mike White. Now they're going to be using Joe Flacco. The one thing about Joe Flacco that uh, gives him an advantage over guys like Mike White and Zach Wilson, the one thing is his experience and the fact that he is a longtime veteran. He has won a Super Bowl. He's seen, you know, all kinds of defenses and what they can throw at you. So that will be the one. If there's a concern with Joe Flacco, it will really be that. Offensively, though, they're not very good. Let's take a look at this. So, when it comes to total yards, we currently have 3,027, um, which is 23rd in the league. They have 2,997, which is 24th. They're one spot right behind us. Yards per game average, we're at 302.7, which is 29th. They are a little bit better in this category at 333 with 22nd. 
Total passing, we have 2,481 on the season, which is currently 14th. They are slightly better in that category as well, with 2,502 on the season, which is 12th. We are at passing yards per game, 248.1, which is currently 17th. Again, they do have a, a bit of an edge there, a decent edge actually with 278 per game, which is 9th. Um, unfortunately, I mean, it, yeah, they, they do beat us in some categories, but they're obviously not a, a very good offense. I mean, it's going to be, look, at the end of the day, and we'll get to predictions, I think this is probably going to be a relatively low-scoring game. Um, you know, I do think, although, look, the Dolphins, if the Dolphins really want to be back on track and all of that, this is one of the teams that they actually should beat and beat, you know, well. Like, they should have, it should be a substantial margin. It should be at least over 10 points. And, you know, it really, at the end of the day, should be a blowout if the Dolphins want to, you know, get back to where they should be and, you know, where they are on paper, et cetera, et cetera. So, but we'll get more into that in a minute. Total rushing, we have 736, which is currently 30th. They have 687, which is one spot behind us at 31st. Per game average, though, we're only averaging 73.6, which is dead last, and they are 76.3, which is good for 30th. Points per game, or points, we have 177 on the season, which is currently 26th or 24th after ties. They are 161 at 28th and 25th after ties. Uh, uh, let's see, points per game, we're only averaging 17.7, which is 28th in the league or 25th after ties. They have just a little bit more than us at 17.9, which is one spot ahead of us at 27th, uh, or I guess it's actually supposed to be 24th with ties. But anyway, um, or maybe we're 26th. I think we are, I was supposed to change that. We're actually 26th. Anyway, point though. Uh, continuing on, so third down offense, both of our offenses are actually, ironically enough, pretty good at converting on third downs, even though neither offense has been very prolific. We are 13th in the league at 40.4%, and they're 10th in the league at 42.1%. So that will be an interesting to see, thing to see how it plays out in this game. You know, are the offenses able to convert on third downs and keep the ball moving? Um, defensively now, we are currently giving up 383.1 yards per game, which is 29th in the league. They're giving up 417.1, which is 32nd. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, now look, the the Jets early on in the season, the first few games, again, you know, injuries have played a part in that. They do have a lot of young players. You know, a few rookies. I know Marcus May just got injured, and he's not in right. So. You know, there have been, there. The, unfortunately, because you don't like to see anybody get injured, they have had to sustain a lot. And with a young, you know, rookie head coach, a, young, a super young team, and et cetera, et cetera, they have fallen off over the past few weeks. Hopefully we will be able to take advantage of that for our offense, um, you know, and, and, you know, Take advantage of it and come away with the win and hopefully a convincing win. Passing yards, we're currently at 290.8, which is 30th. They're at 299.3, which is 32nd. Dead last. Rushing yards, we're giving up 109.3, which is 15th. They're giving up 133.9, which is 29th. Points per game, we're giving up 25.2, which is 24th or 21st after ties. They're giving up 32.9, which is 32nd or 29th after ties. Takeaways, we have 15th, which has a 7th or 6th after ties. They have 7, which is 29th or 14th after ties. Interceptions, we have 7 on the season, which is 18th or 8th with ties. They have only 2, which is dead last or 13th with ties. Uh, fumbles, we have eight, which is currently fourth or third with ties included. They have five, which is 12th or fifth with ties. Sacks, we have 21 on the season, which is currently 16th or ninth after ties. Uh, they have 20, which is 18th. Uh, I, I forgot to fix up some of these ties, so that's why there's some that are the same and they shouldn't be. Uh, that's my bad. I fucked that up. But anyway, um, either way, though, most of this stuff is pretty accurate. I just fucked up on a couple things. Passes defensed, we currently have 55, which is second in the league. They have 34, which is 23rd or 16th after ties. Third down, 
Um, I think I forgot. I think it's because I forgot to update some of that after the Thursday night game that just happened. So my bad, the Patriots-Falcons game. Uh, and then when it comes to third down defense, uh, we're currently at 45.3%, which is 29th in the league. And they are at 41.3, which is 21st. Um, now, I, you know, I like to do this little comparison. Um, so this is how we played against the Ravens and this is how the Bills play or the the Jets played against um the Bills, right? Yeah, it was the Bills. So, um now they actually did win, you know, they did edge us out in a lot of these categories. Obviously, the points category would be the most important. So, if it turned out to be something like this, obviously that would be good for the Dolphins and they would get a win even though you would hope that it's a little bit more convincing than 22 to 17. But we scored 22 points against the Ravens. They scored 17 against the Bills. Again, they got the edge in total yards with their 366 to our 350. They edged us out by just a little bit in passing with their 296 to our 290. They edged us out in rushing as well by a little bit, 70 to our 60. We did beat them out by a tiny margin in yards per play, our 5.6 to their 5.2. They had a bunch of turnovers, and we didn't have any, so obviously we very much won the turnover margin. They had one fumble and four interceptions. We actually tied in third down conversion rate with at 23%. They edge us out in time of possession at 28-12 to their 32-33. And they actually beat us in penalties as well because, as you can see, we were sloppy again in that category, had 11 penalties to their nine. So... Let's take a look at the quarterbacks. This is going to be a little interesting because obviously Joe Flacco has like barely played. So he's, you know, thrown like a couple passes. So that's why he's at 100% completion percentage for 47 yards, one touchdown and 158.3 passer rating. I'm pretty sure that's going to change a little bit. Uh, after this game is all said and done, but he is the quarterback that we are going to be playing So I wanted to give you his season stats even though there's really not much of it Tua on the other hand as we know he is going to be starting as well and he's at 65.3 percent completion percentage for 1,198 yards seven touchdowns five interceptions and an 87.3 passer rating all right, and so for the keys to victory, it's actually pretty simple. The, again, the Jets team, this Jets team is not very good. This is a team we should be able to beat and beat easily. It is in their stadium though, so that that is a factor. Uh, you know, we'll want to see if the defense can continue to play on the level it's played the past couple weeks. Let's see if the play calling is still the same, right? Do they continue to, you know, show that and they definitely should, which I'll get to in a minute. Um you know, and then we'll see if the offense is able to pick it up at least a little bit in this game, playing a not very good Jets defense. So, um, keys to victory, offense, offensively, the O-line does need to hold up against that Jets D-line, though. The D-line for the Jets is their strength as it currently stands, and they're not bad either. So, you know, and obviously our offensive line is hot poo-poo. So, you know, that's going to be one of the key things for our offense to be able to move the ball effectively and efficiently is, is they're going to have to be able to protect, open up some run lanes, you know, because you're going to want to try and have some semblance of balance, even though, you know, we don't run the ball almost ever. We don't commit to it. And when we do, we're not particularly good at it, but, um, you know, primarily, obviously, uh, pass protect and give Tua an opportunity to move the ball. Um, and then, you know, it goes into the next thing is is attack the secondary because if you can if you can hold off their defensive line long enough and give Tua time, then their defense their secondary is young and inexperienced. It's not necessarily that they're not good players. I think some of their young corners and whatever, I mean Marcus May is not going to be in, I don't think cuz he's still injured, but their young corners are not particularly bad. They're just young. And I and and um I th I do think that they could be good at some point down the line and they did show some signs of that earlier on in the season, but they are young and Tua should be able to pick them apart as long as he has time. And then, of course, as always, since it's been an issue all year, no costly mistakes, penalties, and turnovers, if they play a clean game on offense, 
and then just give two enough time. They should be able to easily win this game. Defensively, I mean, just to sum it up, really, just play like you've played the past couple weeks. You know, that's your bread and butter. That's when your defense can really do good things. And some of these young players are coming on, like Phillips and Holland, for example, Brandon Jones. They are starting to come into their own a little bit. And finally, we're starting to really see some fucking player development from this coaching staff. Although if it's going to come anywhere, it's going to come on the defense because that's where Flores specializes. But just continue what you've been doing the past couple weeks because that's that's part of what made your defense so good last year, right? So um, keep that up. But to be a little bit more specific, first and foremost, most, they need to shut down Michael Carter. Um because he is a pretty solid, he is a young guy, he's a rookie, obviously. I think it, they took him in like the third or fourth round. Uh, but he is a pretty good running back, and if they, if, they, if they run the ball, and they run the ball well, then they can control the clock, they can run time off it, they can keep our offense off the field, they can tire out our defense, and it will give them, you know, take some heat off the, the, the pass rush, etc. Right? All of those things we obviously would like to be able to do with our run game. Um, but they actually do have an opportunity to do it, although our run defense has been better since Raekwon Davis has come back and has kind of settled back in and so on and so forth. Although, unfortunately, right now, Christian Wilkins is currently dealing with an injury, and so we'll see how effective he uh, he is. Um, but... You know, it has been better, and so they should be able to shut down the run. It shouldn't be too difficult for them to do, um, especially if they do bring some of those exotic looks and packages and whatever. Um, and then, so to continue that, continue playing aggressive and bring the heat on Flacco. If you can manage that, bro, like, and then I, I think the turnovers will, will just come. Like, you just can't let them be efficient and effective. You can't let the run game be, you know, uh, work. And you can't let Joe Flacco have time and be comfortable back there. So, um, yeah, uh, and that's really about it. I will go ahead and get into my prediction, though, now. So I am, look, you know, I, I said that if the Dolphins were to lose against Houston, I wouldn't feel good about predicting a win for the rest of the season. They won, so they saved that, uh, thankfully. And then they had a good convincing win. Well, you know, I... I wouldn't say it was necessarily convincing because their offense still wasn't very good. The defense was very convincing against the Ravens and definitely gives you some hope going forward because if they can continue to play like that, they should have a good chance in the remaining games, certainly over the next four. Um, and so um, that's what I want to see. And I do think that they will get the win in this game. Um, I'm going to predict a 20, what did I say? 24 to 13 Dolphins victory, a win by 11 points. I think that the defense, I, again, I think it still remains relatively low scoring. Neither offense is particularly great. I think that our defense should be able to keep them in check. And hopefully our offense should be able to do a bit more than what their offense is able to do. And we come away with a 24 to 13 victory. All right, and that is going to wrap up my preview video for the New York Jets versus Miami Dolphins up in the Meadowlands. It is the MetLife Takeover. I know a handful of people are going to be there, you know, prominent YouTubers and so on and so forth. So stay safe out there, guys, and, you know, uh, enjoy it. Hopefully it is a W and you can walk away and go home with a win. Bring us up to four and seven on the season. That would be wonderful. Um, before I do get out of here, make sure to remind you about the Rave On Sports app, the new fan-driven sports app for all of your sports, whether it's basketball, football, whatever, hockey, uh, you know, soccer, whatever you like. Make sure you check them out. Uh, and they are looking to enhance your game day experience with live play-by-play -play coverages, with live chats with other fans and content creators like myself. So check that out. Look in the description box for the links to that. With that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comments section. Of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up. Thank you.